Hello and welcome to the Hoof GP. This episode is a little bit different. We are turning the tables and I am taking a look at your work. You guys have absolutely been smashing the like button and I couldn't be happier about it. So keep doing it guys, it really does mean a lot. Now, on with the video. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, at the Hoof GP, then you guys will know that I asked a bunch of you to send me in some before, during and after pictures of your trimming so that I can give you a few pointers and let everybody else in the world see exactly what some of the viewers are up to when they're not watching me. So I didn't count the total amount of people who sent me things, but there was about 150, maybe 160. So needless to say, I'm afraid I can't include them all in today's video because I'm pretty sure you guys will get bored after the 57th one. So first up is Christian Cap. Let's see exactly how his cow started off. So as you can see, this is a fairly decent looking foot to be honest. My first thing is, this claw here on the right hand side is bigger than the left hand side. So I'm assuming this is the outer or the lateral claw. Christian said that this cow was pretty lame or feeling pretty uncomfortable before he trimmed her. And after he trimmed her, she was going much better. So let's see exactly what he did to do that. Okay, so this is clearly in the middle of the trim. Christian has straightened out this medial claw, so he's stabilized it. It's about the right length, to be honest, so he's not touched the ends. And he's flattened this outer claw to what looks like the same height as the inner claw. So, jobs are good in so far. Let's see how it finished up. Okay, I can see a couple of little problems here, actually. He has done a really good trim, there's no doubt about that. He's done a trim that looks like he's got a fair amount of experience. He's stabilized this medial claw. He's modeled out both claws and both claws at the same length. There is, however, one major problem in this picture, and that is this here. There's a small amount of pus coming out of there, and if there's a pus, then there's a pocket, because that pus needs to come from somewhere. So really Christian needed to have removed more of this horn here to enable that pus to come away completely and not continue to build up fluid and cause pain. It's most likely that this cow will actually remain lame even if she is going slightly better, which Christian said she was, she probably will return to being properly, properly lame. This cow also needed a block on the medial claw, which Christian hasn't done. And because of that, that means this part here with the pus coming out of the abscess in the white line will continue to be insulted and really, really hurt. So Christian, go pick up this cow, stick a block on there, trim out this heel a little bit more and get the weight and the loose horn off there and she will be right as rain. Next. Okay, so Eric Albring has sent us in this picture of the back right hand foot of this cow. And straight away, I can tell she's obviously been trimmed before. If I was to guess, I would say there's something wrong in this area here, either an ulcer or there could even be a sole fracture here on the medial claw. So let's see exactly what Eric did to this cow. Okay, so it's the first of the two. This cow has got an ulcer in the typical site right here. And actually, now that I've read Eric's email properly, I know that Eric actually previously trimmed this cow. She did go better and now he is revisiting her because she started to go backwards. So looking at this straight off the cuff, we could have lowered this heel a little bit more. He's actually made this toe very slightly too short, but he's done a fantastic job of modeling out. So that nice wide model here on that lateral or outer claw means that the weight and the loose horn has come away from the ulcer site, which will mean it can now start to heal. The only problem is, with this heel being high, we'll actually need a block on here, which to be honest, I'm not sure if Eric's done or not. So let's check the next roll. Okay, so Eric has wrapped it and he's clearly wrapped it with a good wrap and underneath that wrap is Engemycin or Oxytetracycline spray, which is an antibiotic and something that I can't tell you guys to use. Although I do know that it works really well. So he's wrapped this and he has in fact put a wooden block on here. Now, I would have put a wooden one on as well, but why not a plastic? Well, that problem is easily fixed. It will only take a matter of a couple of weeks, and in that time, that wooden block will actually wear out, and that means you won't need to bring the cow back in to remove a plastic block. Awesome job, Eric. Next. Okay, so we're moving on to Miguel Alves's foot. And as you can see, he's taken a photo of the cow before she's even 
got her leg in the air, but I can see that she has got swelling and clearly is in pain on that back right foot. See how she's holding it off the ground? And again, you can clearly see she's swollen and she's actually had some sort of dermatitis in between her claws, her clits, up at the heel on that far away foot there. Yep, here. This is an old dermatitis lesion. It's actually begun to heal and it's looking pretty well. But I've got a feeling this claw actually hides a few secrets. Okay, so this is a wall ulcer. That protruding flesh right there is the ulcer itself. And that is what's causing all of the pain on this cow. That dermatitis that you see up here doesn't look like it's an active lesion, so it's not actually causing any pain at all. There's a lot of blood in this photograph, and to be honest, it's probably not gone too far. That blood can be caused by a little tiny nick, which looks to have happened here. Although it's not ideal, it is not the end of the world. This claw does definitely need to be wrapped with an iodine bandage and a block on that left hand claw or the medial claw would really, really, really be beneficial to this cow. Having the weight on here is just gonna keep insulting that area and it's unlikely that she will get better without a block on here. So Miguel, crack on, get the cow back in the crush, stick a block on that medial claw and make sure you dress that wound with iodine and she should be right as rain. These things are easily cleaned up. Okay, this is Niels Reuter, 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 Niels, Niels Reuter. I'm probably saying that wrong. Sorry if I am Niels. But anyway, here is Niels' cow. He's got her foot up in the air and straight away we can see there is far too much weight on that lateral claw. So the outside claw of this back right foot. So the outside claw of this back right foot is having to deal with far too much weight and that is probably causing a problem. So let's see. Yep, sure enough, there is an ulcer in the typical site here on this cow. Niels has done a really good job. He's actually been using one of those discs with all the tiny little stones on, so it's abrasive. Not like my disc, which actually has knives in it. So that is why you get such a smooth finish with my disc and a rough sanded kind of looking finish when you use a disc like Niels has. So this area here is the actual ulcer. Niels has taken all of this down. He's removed fissures from the rear of the heel and he's made sure the length is correct. I'm hoping that he's put a block on the inner claw because she really needs it. And I'm assuming that's why he has leveled that down, or at least I'm hoping that's why he's leveled that down, ready for the glue. Yep, and just exactly as I would have done. Niels has glued on a wooden block to that inside claw, taking the weight completely off the ulcer site. Again, an ulcer is a really easily fixed problem. So a wooden block is perfect. It's gonna wear down in a matter of weeks and you won't have to revisit the cow because she will be completely healed. The only thing is, in this photo, this part here of the foot is likely to cause more cracking. It would have been slightly more beneficial if you'd taken out these tiny little cracks here. It may seem really insignificant and me being pernickety, pernickety is a Scottish word I think, but it is essential to take out the very beginning of the crack because if the crack is growing from where the horn is growing, then that crack is gonna continue for the duration of the horn growth. In other words, for the duration of the cow's life. So you need to get rid of the beginning of the hoof crack as well, so that sound and hard horn can grow in seamlessly. Other than that, awesome job. Boom, and Niels has actually included a photograph of the cow's foot back on the ground, and it is very, very clear to see how good a job he's done. The only problem with this cow is, because the heel bulb here is so large, it probably means that this cow has had a repeating problem. And that means that the bone may have enlarged on the inside. So she's gonna be more apt in the future to get the same problem again. But fantastic trimming job, well done. Next, Maurizio Galliano Guzman. What a name, good one. So Maurizio has sent in this picture of a cow with really overgrown claws. And I'm guessing that outer claw, as we look at it, has got something wrong with the toe. So it's probably got toe necrosis or a toe ulcer. So something is really going wrong there, which will mean she is walking back on her heels and it could be something extremely complicated. If we look here at slide number two, Maurizio has applied a wooden block to the inner claw, which is perfect. This outer claw here has got necrosis, so necrotic tissue. So she does in fact have toe necrosis. In other words, the bone inside this foot is actually rotting away. Now Maurizio has done a good job of trimming this and that is about as far as you can go. A vet, however, could take it much, much further, get rid of all of the necrotic tissue and actually could cure this cow's foot. 
but it would be an extremely invasive procedure for this cow and not one for the farmer or a hoof trimmer like me to do. In its present condition like this, she will go much, much better. She'll be less lame, less painful, but there is zero chance that that will actually heal exactly as it is. Like I said, it would need some vet intervention to take away all of the toe necrosis. So Maurizio has then washed the lesion, perfect, and he's wrapped it, hopefully with an iodine solution, to try and draw out that moisture and really try and heal up the toe area of this foot. As you can see here, the claw is not even touching the ground anymore. So she will be painless from that side of the foot. Awesome job again. That is functionality at its very, very heart. Well done, Maurizio. Okay, so on to Quentin Moonshine. That's not his real name. He wanted to be anonymous, so I figured we'd go with Quentin Moonshine. Okay, so here we have a cow with crossed over toes. She is really, really elongated on that outer one. So it's overgrown in other words. And the inner one has actually got a bit too much growth as well. So let's see exactly what Quentin has done. Okay, wow. Uh, uh, not good. Okay, so on the face of it, this does not look like a pretty trim, does it? But we're not here for a beauty contest. So let's analyze it and see exactly what Quentin has done, what he's done wrong, what he's done right, and if this is gonna benefit the cow. Okay, so I'm gonna be quite critical here. Sorry, Quentin. To me, this looks like the outer or the lateral claw is still too long. It's definitely longer than the inner claw. And that means that if you've trimmed it to the correct height according to the end of the toe, so five millimeters at the toe, then this claw, this outer one, is still carrying too much weight. Also, both the inner claw and the outer claw are actually sloping in the way like this, which means there's gonna be torsional pressure up that axial wall. So in other words, right up here, here's the lesion by the way, folks, right up here where the crack begins on this axial wall, that's the axial wall here. As the cow walks, there will be pressure up here actually tearing the horn apart. So this will continue to get worse. And also because there's a lesion in this toe area and the axial wall, you really, really would need a block on that inner claw. And this is a case where you would use a plastic or an extremely hard wearing block because that is a long-term problem. So kudos for getting her up in the air. You've used oxytetracycline. There's probably dermatitis in there. That'll help to cure that. You've definitely taken weight off the area. So she will be more comfortable. There's no doubt about that. So you've done a fantastic job in getting her in the crush in the first place, but you could really do with just fine tuning things, putting a block on there and really, really getting her on the road to recovery. Next. Okay, this is from Rick, and this is a cow that has mortalado or digital dermatitis, or hairy warts if you're in the States. And this is actually the before picture. You can see that really, really red, raised and painful lesion there on the heel. Now, what could we have done to make this trim better? Despite the fact that this is something that's wrong with her heel up here and extremely painful up there, you still need to trim the rest of the hoof correctly. And I'm gonna tell you why. So on this foot, we could act. So on this foot, we need to trim the outside claw to the right length, which would be the same length as this inner claw here. So you should have taken a little bit more off the toe, Rick. Then we should have reduced the height here to be the same height as this cow's. Then we needed to reduce the whole height of the claw to be the same height as this inner claw and give this a really wide model around here to relieve the sole ulcer site and give the inner claw a more shallow model around here. But it's a problem with her heel, Graham. Why bother? Well, here's why. So it may not seem like it matters, but if you model out this area of this foot and model out here on the inner claw, then slurry will actually dissipate or leave that area more readily, which means the foot will not be as dirty, which means digital dermatitis will be more easily dealt with. Now, secondly, this dew claw. I don't always trim the dew claws, you guys know that. However, in a case like this, this extended dew claw means that more dirt will actually cling to the area and therefore dirty the digital dermatitis lesion even more. So this should really have been trimmed back to about an inch in length. By doing that, you're gonna make sure that, that area is much, much cleaner and therefore help the cow deal with the digital dermatitis. So let's see exactly how Rick got on in the after shot. Okay, so this has done well. Rick actually wrapped this with a special kind of gel. I'm not sure what was in it, but these gels are designed to give the cow's immune system a helping hand kind of thing. 
So it starts to combat and break down the cell walls of digital dermatitis and then the cow's immune system takes over and kills the rest of the virus. You can see here, this is a calisated area and in here it is still active, but it is definitely much, much better than it was before. Although that duke lot is still extended and you can see the dirt clinging to it. In here it's quite dirty, although it's been washed. So again, if this had been remodeled out, reduce the size of this duke lot and again, probably apply a wrap or a spray product to this and should be right as rain. All in all, I'm being really picky and that is a good result. I'd be happy with it. Next! So this is a cow's foot from Nadja Radsan. Nadja has sent this in and I think it is a back right hand foot on a cow in a layover shoot, so she's lying on her side. Here we can clearly see both claws are slightly too long, but the inner claw is actually slightly longer than the outer claw, which is a little unusual. Here's the frontal view and again you can see one claw is clearly longer than the other and length equates to height guys. If it's longer it's actually higher so there's too much weight on that claw, the one that's long. Okay here he's trimmed it and I can see a couple of little problems Radva. Um, please don't take offence if I call you out on anything, I'm only trying to help. So first up the length looks really good, they're both the same length, that's obvious, but Raja has taken too much off this wall here. The outer wall on a cow's foot is where all of the weight bearing properties are. So this wall here is what actually takes the full force of the cow. This is the strong or structural part of the hoof. So we really, really don't want to take anything away from this outer wall, if at all possible. The same goes for this inner wall here. It's so tempting to trim up in between the claws and make it look nice and straight and pretty. But this axial wall right here, again, this is where the white line is and everything on the outside of the white line is the weight bearing surface. So that is where the structural, in bleh, structural integrity of the hoof lies. And by trimming away this, we've thinned it out. So there is the white line. And now we only have a couple of millimeters of height couple of millimeters of thickness of the hoof wall here so we've really really weakened that area so now she'll be liable to cracks in the axial wall so in other words a crack from here all the way down here or cracks from here in the way and those cracks are actually pretty difficult to deal with they are something that takes weeks and weeks if not months to cure so Raja 10 out of 10 for effort for getting her in getting her up getting her trimmed but we need to leave that axial wall alone and make sure we don't trim any excess hoof of this outer wall. Apart from that, good trim. So next up, Dr. Vladimir Georgiev. He sounds like he's probably a vet, so he should know exactly what he's doing. Hopefully. Okay, so we have a cow here with a back right foot and she has a digital dermatitis lesion in here, or hairy wart if you're in America. Vladimir or Dr. Vladimir has trimmed away the back here, so he's taken away some deep lesions or deep fissures where all the dirt can collect, and he's modeled away this outer claw. Let's see how he progresses. Okay, so this is fantastic and this is a really, really confident trim. Because Dr. Vladimir has not taken any height off these soles here, in other words, he's not trimmed them back and they're not white at all, that shows confidence. He's confident enough to realize that actually this cow's hoof is in fantastic shape and condition. There is equal weight bearing between these two claws, so there's no need to alter the height or the length of the claw. He's modeled them out really, really nicely and he's removed all of those deep fissures or cracks around the heels. That is where a lot of muck can build up and dermatitis causing bacteria can actually live in there. And also, it helps to clean the area up. So like we said earlier on with the hoof that had the dermatitis, by modeling this out, by taking away the fissures, the dirt is gonna disappear or dissipate from the area completely, which should help the digital dermatitis purely by itself. However, Dr. Vladimir has gone on to use some kind of topical spray again. It's probably an antibiotic, which is called oxytetracycline or angiomycin, and he sprayed the whole of the area here. That is pretty much exactly how I would have trimmed that foot, but I would have used a slightly different product because I'm not allowed to use antibiotics. Awesome job, Dr. Vladimir. And here he is, by the way, looking pretty awesome with a different foot. Nice mask. Okay, here is Warawut Lumhuan. I hope I'm saying that right. Warawut Lumhuan. It's not exactly what you call a Scottish name, but it is a good name. Anyway, let's look at Warawut's trim. So, we don't actually have a picture of the base of the foot in this one, but we do have a side-on view. And actually, I've seen this one before, so I wanted to show you exactly what Warawut has done really, really well. If we look at this foot here, you can clearly see it is too long. 
This inner claw here looks like it's a nice length, but this outer one, it's got a little kink here, and um, the angle of the foot is what we really want to look at here. Notice how the shin bone comes down, and then this angle is quite, quite flat, isn't it? Her heel has got this obtuse angle here, and it's actually sitting quite low. So let's see the after trim. Here, Warawood has actually trimmed this back to the perfect length, according to that inner claw. Look at the angle of the heel now. It's much, much straighter. Look at the angle of the shin bone compared to this dorsal wall. It's much, much straighter. So it is really, really a functional trim. This is how exactly you take care of your cow's tendons and actually help to alleviate the problems digital dermatitis can cause because it's lifting those heels out of the foot. Look, if we flick between the two, look at the differences in the angle. Really commendable trim, Warwood. I like that a lot. Okay, so here is another one from, I'm not exactly sure who this is from, but look at it. It's a terrible trim, absolutely terrible. That's not, I would never do that to a cow. I'm only joking. This is one of Aaron Lavoie's trims. You can see it says crush. And actually, this cow is slightly big on this outer claw and the inner claw looks pretty good, but there's a little crack there that probably needs investigated. And if you look at the after trim, you can see Aaron has cleaned off this. He hasn't really taken any height off that inside claw. He's cleaned it off, removed that loose horn that was sitting there. And this one must be at a slight angle because Aaron actually trims off the axial wall. So the wall that runs up between the two claws, he would like that square or perpendicular to the axial wall. So he wants the bottom of the foot square to the axial wall. And that is why he's not trimmed the outside of this claw, but he has actually reduced the height here. Notice he's not taken anything off this axial wall. So that keeps all the strength in that axial wall or the hoof wall in the inside. He's not touched the outsides. He's not touched the outside there. He's not touched the heels because it didn't need anything. And he's done a nice wide model on that lateral claw. I don't need to tell him this. Perfect trim, isn't it? That little crack. It's totally insignificant. He will have checked that. It won't be a crack, it'll just be dirt or an indentation. And there's no point in taking that away just for the sake of a photograph. Nice trim. Just two more folks. Here is Will Kane's trim. Now, if we look at this, Will has actually sent us photographs of both of the back feet of this cow. And you can see the lateral claw is far, far too long in this case. So let's see exactly what he's done to combat that. Or let's look at the other foot. Again, it's a mirror image of the right hand claw. The outside claw is far, far too long again. There's lots of loose horn in that inner portion. So round about there where the modeling will be. And there's a couple of little stones actually sticking into this cow's foot. So let's see exactly what Will did to this cow's foot. Okay, so on the face of it, this might not look like an aesthetically beautiful foot, but actually it's much more functional than it first seems. Will has reduced the length and therefore the height of this claw here. He's reduced it right down. I can tell, although he has actually trimmed the medial claw, he's left the height in this heel because this part here hasn't been touched by the grinder. He's just leveled up the outer wall there. He's modeled the medial claw and he's modeled the lateral claw and everything is looking pretty good. But is there anything we could do to improve it? Well, actually, well, there is slightly. So here on this lateral claw, this is the proper, proper problem site for sole ulcers or the typical sole ulcer site. And that is actually around there. So you should really have modeled that much wider here, probably right into there where my arrow is and left this one just as it is. So all I would do in this case is model this much more deeply to relieve that typical sole ulcer site and make sure she never ever has problems with excessive bruising or sole ulceration. And the other foot, again, it's the same. He's done a very, very good job. He's barely touched here. There was some cracking on that foot, so he's investigated it. He's left the height alone on that medial claw. Because remember, we're trying to reduce the weight bearing properties of this claw and get that weight onto the inner claw. So we don't want to reduce the height of here because then we would have to reduce this claw even more. Again though, Will could have done with given this a much wider model and that would have protected that typical sole ulcer site from being pounded on by the actual pedal bone, the bone inside the cow's foot, which causes the main problems. Apart from that, spot on. And last but not least, let's look at James Finglandstrom. Okay, so initial thoughts are, this is a back left foot, 
here. There's probably an old sole ulcer or maybe even a new one. She's definitely had it for quite a while though because you can see that hole coming right down through the sole which means it's half been happening for at least a month, month and a half. Possibly a problem in this white line crack here because it looks really dark and it actually looks like there's some separation there. See that little bulge here? And obviously there's a stone over here. So let's see exactly what James did in this case. Boom! Okay, so there's been some cracking horns. So in an ideal world, you wouldn't reduce the height of this medial claw here because we want to get the weight of this claw. That stone has caused this little indentation, which actually has come to nothing at all. So that's no issue whatsoever. There's a little bit of bruising here, which isn't actually gonna affect them that much. But there are two main problems on this claw. And that is the typical sole ulcer here. And actually something which I think James has partially missed this white line problem here. He's obviously taken note of it, but I think it could have been investigated. But I think it could have been investigated to a greater extent. That looks like it tracks far higher into the white line than James has actually initially thought. So James, what would I have done differently with this trim? Well, first up, I would definitely have put a block on this inner claw. This is a fairly sore lesion. It's actually bleeding and open and raw. And here, if it is a lesion, is really, really sore. That is something that can cause a lot of pain to these cows. So I'd have applied a block here. I would have investigated this more, particularly this dark region here. And this part of the horn is actually loose. It may not look like it in the photograph, but the reason it is dark is because there's a bit of dirt trapped in behind that loose horn. And if you actually put the edge of your knife in here, you would have found that that slither would have come away. And again, it might seem picky or pernickety that I am picking away at these little tiny differences, but those little improvements and those little alterations in your trimming style, in other words, taking away those tiny slithers of loose horn can mean the difference between having to see this cow again and her making a full recovery from this very first trim. And I think actually, if you'd taken away that slither, then she would definitely have made a full recovery. As it is, she's probably gonna need another couple of trims and you will need to block that inside claw. That is the end of me roasting you guys. I hope I wasn't too sore on you. I don't think I was. And you guys really, really inspire me to keep challenging myself and pushing myself to be better and better at hoof trimming all the time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed my cows in the background. They're pretty much everywhere. Can you see them? There's lots of them. And I hope you subscribe to this channel. But for now guys, it's goodbye from me, goodbye from the cows, and goodbye from the Hoof GP. Thanks very much again, guys. See you soon.